Hello adventurer! Recently, I saw some very misleading TikTok about traveling in Singapore that went viral. This misinformation will cost you dearly if you take them without context. So in this video, I'm gonna debunk them and give you the real truth about traveling in Singapore. Let's begin. Why nobody told me Singapore was so expensive? Okay, pause. Everybody knows that Singapore can be very expensive. We were actually ranked the world's most expensive city to live in for nine consecutive years by the EIU. But this ranking actually is not very accurate. I'll get to that later. This is how much I spent in Singapore for five nights. My flight from Japan was $470. My hotel was $1,200 per night, which equaled out to $6,000 damn dollars. Did y'all see the size of the hotel room? It even has a living room. And she actually stayed at the RWS Resort World Hotel, which is known to be a high-end hotel. Anyway, all hotels in Singapore will state their price upfront. So the real surprise here is why is she surprised? Believe it or not, this was on the cheaper side. Airbnb is illegal in Singapore, so all the hotels are hella expensive. Believe it or not, there are many other platforms you can use to book your accommodations that's not Airbnb. Many of which will give you a broad range of options of all prices. You should be able to find one that is reasonable for you. But of course, the more affordable rooms will not have as comfortable beds, large living room area, and services will also be limited. Transportation was about $800. My one-way transfer from the hotel to the airport was $90, and it was only a 20-minute drive. Honestly, the first time that I watched this, I thought, wow, this must be satire, right? She must be kidding. But no, she's serious. I don't know how she spent $800 for transport in 5 nights. But the moment she said she spent $90 for a 20 minutes ride, she must have taken the limo taxi everywhere. The truth is, in Singapore, you don't need to break the bank to get around. We have a very user-friendly and very affordable public transportation network that has great coverage. You can almost go anywhere in the country with the public transportation. A normal tourist wouldn't spend more than $8 per day, assuming that the activities are planned properly. Food cost about $1,500. My tuna salad and calamari was $85 alone. <sighs> Why would you eat tuna salad and calamari in Singapore? She spent $1,500 for five nights, which equals to $300 per night. That's a huge budget for food. With that amount of budget, you can eat so well at the popular food spots in Singapore. But no, she just eats at the overpriced places. Generally, restaurants are expensive anywhere in Singapore. However, that's not the only place where you can get food. Just go to any of the hawker centers in Singapore. Not only you'll get a ton of local food options, you can also get a fulfilling meal in under $10. In some hawker centers, you can even find some shops with a Michelin star. I went to Universal Studios, the movies and sightseeing, so activities cost about $300. Okay, this part of our video makes the most sense. $300 for five nights of activities, that's actually very reasonable. But that's assuming she had five full days of activities. Please, please don't come Singapore just to watch a movie. There are way better things for you to do. Take a walk down Chinatown or around Marina Bay instead. My total cost for this trip was $9,000. Is Singapore worth visiting? Yes. But is it worth the price? No. <sighs> Let me fix the question. Is luxury worth the price in Singapore? Of course, the answer is no. Just look at the top comment. Basically, she wanted luxury travel in Singapore, but she didn't bother to check the price first. Anyway, back to the ranking that puts Singapore as the most expensive city to live in. I looked into their metrics that they used to measure living costs, and I found that they included things that are not necessary for living in Singapore. For example, getting a car, which can cost you upwards of 100,000 Singapore dollars. But it's not necessary because with our public transportation networks, you can get around just fine without a car. Also, prices of cigarettes and alcohols, which are heavily taxed in Singapore. A pack of cigarettes will cost you about $10 to $15, while a can of beer costs you at least $4. This ranking even take into account the price of international school, which leads me to believe that this is only useful if you're an expat trying to live the expat lifestyle in Singapore. Let's debunk the next video. I've been to seven countries all over Southeast Asia in the past five months. Yeah, Singapore. 
I heard it's a very nice country. Let me tell you what I think is the best and the worst countries to go to. Coming in at last place is Singapore, and Singapore was the worst country. I do not recommend it. The reason being is there was like nothing to do in Singapore besides walk around and see a few things. But Singapore is just so small. I understand where he's coming from. Especially, he's comparing his experience to other bigger countries. So naturally, you will feel that there is nothing to do in the tiny Singapore. But saying that there is nothing to do, it's a bit extreme, don't you think? In fact, one thing I really love about Singapore is that you can get from one tourist destination to the next within 15 to 30 minutes instead of having to drive one to two hours from each places. So you get to spend more time playing than to be on the road. The people in Singapore were pretty nice. I just had a few experiences that were definitely not as nice. Like when I went up to the big huge tower, it's called Marina Bay Sands or whatever, like they were just super rude. Like the waiters and waitresses were just not kind at all. This is a very smart man. He always does the criticism sandwich. Anyway, I'm always very sorry when visitors have an unpleasant encounter with the locals. Definitely not an experience that anyone deserves when visiting. Which is why I need to share with you this perspective. Although many of us Singaporeans don't seem very friendly, a lot of times we don't mean it that way. Let me give you an example. When my sister came to visit from Australia, she had a bad time ordering food at the hawker center. That day, we were having lunch together and she went to the noodle shop to order some food. There was a line in front of the shop, but it didn't take long until it was her turn to order. <sighs> And this is how she ordered. Hi, how are you? Do you have any recommendations on what's good here? And the hawker auntie just replied her back with a question. What you want to order? When my sister came back with her food, she was so upset. In a glance, you might think, Singaporeans are so rude. But let's think about it from the perspective of the hawker auntie. There's a long line of people waiting to buy food from you and you want to serve them as fast as possible. But then there's this one woman asking you questions, holding the line. Of course, she could be nicer about it, but the norm in Singapore is to be straightforward. You go to the shop, you make your order, you get your food, and then you go and eat. You do all that with very minimal chit-chatting. It's not the norm to exchange pleasantries with the customer. My point is, when coming to Singapore, please understand that Singapore is very fast-paced, so a lot of times, service staff are very straightforward. This may strike you off as rude or hasty, but a lot of the times, I don't think that they mean it that way. Okay, back to the video. Singapore reminds me of Disneyland just because everything in Singapore is perfect. Do you see that? Another criticism sandwich? Anyway, I won't say that Singapore is perfect. Rather, most things that we do here are very carefully planned. This is actually an existential issue for Singapore. We have no choice but to be very, very, very careful with everything. Each action needs to be 10 steps ahead. I mean, you look at this. Can you see where is Singapore in the world map? You have to zoom in a lot to find us. With this much land, we don't really have any natural resources. The only resource that we have is our people. We even have to buy most of our food and water. It's been ingrained in the administration of Singapore that everything has to be very well planned and put together. There is no else. As a result, most of our public projects are very functional and very organized, which is very crucial because Singapore has to draw in all the foreign investments that it can. The moment that Singapore starts to mess up, that's when we lose our branding and no one will want to come here for business anymore. Singapore had very little culture, which I did not like. I like to go to a country that has a lot of culture and I try to embrace myself in it. Again, I feel that I know where he's coming from. After visiting bigger countries with thousands of years of history, like Japan, Thailand, coming to Singapore must have felt very flat. We don't have beautiful ancient architecture just lying around in our city. We also don't have any special cultural performance that we can show off to visitors. So if you're looking for that kind of culture in Singapore, you'll be sorely disappointed. However, if you want to experience the world's number one airport, walk through the most beautiful man-made gardens, have an unending food options to choose from, then you'll have a good time in Singapore. But if you're someone who wants to go to Singapore, go to Malaysia. It is very similar, but like 10 times better with like culture, better food, better buildings. But anyways, if you guys enjoy this type of content, follow for more. This might be the most misleading part of his TikTok. Malaysia, very similar. Yes, we have similar mix of demographics and our local food kinda overlaps, but 10 times better? Hmm, I don't know about that. Better food, maybe, I mean, a lot of the good chef in Singapore comes from Malaysia. <laughs> Better buildings? Depends on which part of Malaysia, I guess. The Petronas Tower is pretty cool. Here's my take on this. 
Malaysia is definitely a lot more affordable than Singapore. So if you want to have a rich food adventure without going poor, then I recommend visiting Malaysia to places like Penang or Malacca. But in my opinion, Singapore still wins for food because you get to find a greater variety of quality food. So you can easily find good Thai food, Vietnamese food, Indonesian food, and all their fusions here in Singapore. Anyway, flights between Malaysia and Singapore are very affordable. So if you're in the area, I suggest just visiting both and experience them for yourself. This next video almost has 1 million views and 44,000 likes. That's why I need you guys to help me like this video so that we can fight this misinformation together. After traveling to 33 countries, I would say that Singapore is definitely not on my list of favorites and I'm going to tell you why. So first off, I'm not sure if it's a me thing, but locals are pretty rude. And we encountered this as soon as we arrived at the airport with the taxi driver. Again, I'm very sorry that she had an unpleasant experience. He didn't smile to us, he made me put the luggage in the car. And the only time he talked was to ask how much money I made. I feel like she got very, very unlucky. Of all the taxi rides that I've taken, whenever I have a big luggage, the driver always comes out and offer to assist me. Just so happened that she got that one driver that is not very helpful. I also feel like I'm not really in Asia when I'm in Singapore because it's super westernized. I don't know if there's a lot of tourists when I went or just a lot of expats living there, but I don't feel like I'm in Asia at all. Honestly, I don't know what to say. Is she expecting to see more Asians? depending on which part of Singapore that you're visiting. Some parts will have a lot more tourists. And in the CBD area, you can actually find a lot more expats. If you want to see more local Singaporeans, then you have to come to the local neighborhoods. But there's not much for tourists to do over there. So what do you want? Next biggest thing is that everything here is so expensive. We stayed at Marina Bay Sands and this room alone cost us a fortune. Aiyah, uh, another travel influencer who goes to an expensive hotel and never check the price. Fun fact, guys. Marina Bay Sands is not the only hotel in Singapore. I also don't understand why people are obsessed with this hotel and this pool deck. I see that so many better hotels that are actually worth paying for. Well, an infinity pool right on top of a skyscraper does sound quite cool. And the view from above, it's quite fantastic. We even had trouble finding a restaurant that wasn't overpriced and actually had decent food. Same mistake as the first video. Look at how fancy the restaurant is. So we often had to resort to the Hakka centers. Oh, this part is actually quite upsetting. What do you mean had to resort to hawker centers like as if it's a bad thing? Do you know that hawker centers are the best places to eat in Singapore? Your biggest regret will be finding out that one meal at that hotel restaurant could get you 10 meals at the hawker center. And can someone also please answer this question, but what do you actually do in Singapore besides eat and shop? Well, I recommend walking around the Marina Bay. You can experience a lot of Singapore's iconic sites just by walking one round around the Marina Bay. The whole set of zoos in Mandai are also very good. We have a world-class Singapore Zoo, the world's second largest bird aviary, the only night zoo in the world, and a river-themed zoo. You can also check out my tourist attraction tier list later. The last thing is also that Singapore feels so artificial. Everything is man-made and made for just entertainment. I feel like it's the Las Vegas of Asia, but actually not quite there yet. Well, we aren't fortunate enough to have a Grand Canyon or a Niagara Falls naturally forming in our tiny country. So we did the next best thing and built our own wonders. Some of these are so cool that people go wow when they see them. Also, I don't see anything wrong by building things for entertainment. But I don't really understand the not quite there yet in comparison with Las Vegas. From my experience, Vegas has a very different focus than Singapore. It's mostly luxury casino hotels, while Singapore is a garden city where people come to live and work. Actually, I didn't really like walking down Vegas. The streets stink of weed and there are hookers advertising their services in broad daylight. I wouldn't bring my family there. So actually, yeah, I'm glad that Singapore is not Las Vegas. Don't get me wrong, their gardens are so pretty and I loved walking through everything, but there's just no natural substance to the country. <laughs> This is like the, no offense, but I'm trying not to get you wrong, but I'm struggling here. What, what is this natural substance that you expect in Singapore? So these are the reasons why I don't like Singapore. If you're actually from Singapore and disagree on what I just said, I'm open to hearing your feedback, so comment down below. <laughs> this is the funniest part of the video. Look at the comments. <laughs> it's disabled. I guess she's not that open to feedback after all. <laughs> all right, let's recap. So, from what we've just watched, most of the viral disappointments actually comes from the wrong expectations and the lack of research. The truth is, 
luxury travel will break your bank in Singapore. But you will surely experience the luxury that you deserve. If you expect to see natural cliffs, mountains, waterfalls, you'll also be utterly disappointed. But if you want to experience living in a beautiful garden city, go on food adventures at the many hawker centers, play in world-class attractions, or just come and witness the miracle of a country that should never have existed, then you might have a great time. To avoid disappointment from the lack of research, check out my next video over here where I rank the top Singapore tourist attractions which can help you plan your next trip to Singapore. I'll see you there.